Welcome back to TK Tennis. So this video is going to be a request for feedback essentially for the TK Tennis swing weight and balance estimate tool. If you happen to see my last video, which is why I think you're doing your string journey wrong, this is really an extension of that video. And if you happen to be someone that's just really technically likes to nerd out on your technical specifications of your racket and customizing your racket, this video is probably for you. But again, this is sort of also a request for feedback because this is considered beta version V1, where it allows you to really estimate your specifications of your racket based on various customizations that you might do. Or even if you're looking to buy a racket and you're looking to customize it there afterwards. And when I say customization, I'm not necessarily even meaning lead tape. I'm just even meaning a vibration damper or an overgrip and strings, how do these different aspects of your tennis racket, when you customize it, how does it impact your particular weight and swing weight and so forth? And like I mentioned in that last video of why I think you're doing your racket journey wrong, it was heavily focused on swing weight because this is the most important number in my mind when you're choosing a racket. Static weight, which is like a 300 gram racket, um, is typically a standard racket weight is 300 grams in many cases, but that's sort of what manufacturers often promote in terms of their weights is their static weight. And a static weight is simply carry weight, right? And, but we don't carry rackets, we swing rackets. So swing weight by far is the most important number because how a racket swings around a point when it has inertia and momentum really matters in tennis compared to carry weight, which is not irrelevant, but is much less of a factor in a racket that you may prefer when you're playing with a racket since you actually are swinging it. And that's the same thing with balance point. So one quick note about this calculator or estimate tool, it is just an estimate tool. It is not meant to be super accurate and it's not a replacement for dedicated measurement tools. And that's what you'll see in the readme file. So jumping into the spreadsheet itself, if this spreadsheet ends up becoming useful to a lot of people, I will put the entire calculator in a much more UI friendly way on a website. But for now, it's on a spreadsheet. And again, like I said, it's meant for to get feedback from my audience to see if they can sort of poke holes in it. And if you see some errors or problems with the spreadsheet or you have ideas how to make it better, please let me know in the comments. Now, first, if you wanna get a copy of this spreadsheet, this will be view only, but you'll see the link in the description below. And what you need to do to be able to edit it yourself and be able to use it is you'll see the link in the description. So if you have a Google account and you'll take the, uh, you'll open up the link that you see in the description and then you'll make a copy of the spreadsheet and then you can edit it as you need to. So let's take a quick tutorial. So you'll see the key here on the top right. User inputs are in green. In orange is preset values, and in purple is the calculated outputs. So anything you see in green right here is editable and should be altered as you need it to. And anything in these orange area are the presets and how it impacts uh, the actual calculations. And then, the, of course, the calculated specs are here down in purple. So let's run through an example and take you through this. So we have on the right, we have the Tennis Warehouse website, and we have a Wilson Blade 98V9. So we'll run through and show you an example. One thing to note also is that each one of these fields has a little note next to it. So if you're unsure what it means, you can just open up the note or just hover over it and you can read about it. So let's say if you go down to balance point and this balance point is in millimeters, but if you wanted to, if you knew what your racket was in terms of points headlight, you can convert it to millimeters by looking at this chart right here. So let's first take a look and start with this V9 racket on the right from Tennis Warehouse. And let's input the numbers. Like I mentioned in the video, many times you will get the specifications of a racket in unstrung form. The nice thing about Tennis Warehouse, which I think is good for the most part, is that they give you the strung weight. So their strung weight is here. The balance point is also based on the strung um, customization of a racket and the swing weight as well. So if we enter 323 grams in right here, which is already inputted, 323 grams, we'll match it up. And then we'll take a look at the balance point. It's 333.02 centimeters, which is just 330. So you just have to change it to from centimeters to millimeters. So we're gonna change this to 330. And the swing weight they're saying is 324, and we're just gonna match that up at 324. 
So now we have the values right here. Again, your racket, if you have the V9, won't be exactly what they have in Tennis Warehouse. You would hope it would be, but because of the variances in quality control, your racket could be quite a bit different than what Tennis Warehouse has. So you just have to keep in mind, it's garbage in, garbage out, or on the opposite, if you put in proper numbers, you're gonna get better outputs, right? So in this case, if you happen to use the Tennis Warehouse numbers because you don't have any measurement tools, that's all you have to go off of. Uh, but remember that your racket may not be the same as the rackets that they tested. And from my understanding is Tennis Warehouse takes a small handful of rackets that they get from a manufacturer and they average these weights between those bundle of rackets to come up with these numbers. So here are the numbers we entered. And then we go down to the numbers they output. Now I need to change this to zero because we don't have any lead tape on here. And we don't have any handle weight added. And since this was already strong weight, they're giving you the strong information. So we need to make sure that we have strings set to no, even though it does have strings, but it's because they gave us the strong weight. If this number here was the unstrung weight, then we would want to change the strings to yes. And that would change the numbers accordingly. So now let's take a look at does your racket have rows? So in a vibration dampener, Let's take a look and change these to no. So do you use a vibration damper? So we have the stock specifications in strung form. That's why we had string set to no. But let's say you use a vibration damper and we change that to yes. So how does that impact your numbers? Well, that's where the presets come into place right here on the right hand side. So if you have a vibration damper, it will impact the swing, uh, the static weight by three grams and then it'll also impact your swing weight by three kilograms square centimeters and it'll change your balance point by zero so it won't have any impact on balance point because the vibration damp is pretty much in the middle of your racket and it has really no relative impact in terms of your balance point now the same thing would apply to an overgrip now some people might say well overgrips don't weigh that much that's true but it's also not true an overgrip is six grams so it adds six grams in static weight as you can see here and then in terms of swing weight because it's all the way at the bottom of the racket in the handle it has almost no impact on swing weight just one and that's it that's all it would have but on balance point it actually it has a five millimeter impact on your balance point so it makes the racket quite a bit more head light when you add an overgrip and then the same thing would happen with strings. So even though they gave us the numbers when it was strung, if you changed it to yes, let's say it wasn't strung, you change it to yes, strings have a dramatic impact on all your values. A typical string on average weighs about 18 grams. So you're adding 18 grams into your head of your racket. So it adds 18 grams of carry weight. And then it also on the average impacts your swing weight by 30 kilograms square centimeters. So if your racket in unstrung form was 300 in terms of swing weight and you added strings it's going to be around 330 in terms of swing weight and then it impacts the balance point also very dramatically by 12 millimeters and that's a big deal so you're adding strings and it changes it by 12. And that's how these rows work does your racket have now if you go further customizations and you go into lead tape then of course it's also going to have an impact. So let's change strings back to no. And let's say you did use a dampener and you did use an overgrip. You can see that this racket right here, the V9 blade, now weighs 332 grams. Its swing weight of 328. Its balance point is 335 millimeters, which equals 2.5 points headlight. In my book, I don't like a racket that's this little headlight. I think every racket should be at least four points headlight all the way to like 10 or 12 points headlight depending on the overall weight of the racket. But you can see but just by adding an overgrip and a vibration dampener and with these specifications it's not very headlight. So you might then add okay or you might be someone that says well this is too light I want a little bit more swing weight and let's say you change uh, you want to add some lead tape to the nine and three o'clock positions on the side of the head. So right here on his notes, it can show you that if you add four inches of quarter inch lead tape, it'll equal one gram. So let's say you add two strips of four inches on each side of the racket. So nine and three. So that's four, four, 
plus four, plus four, which is 16 inches of lead tape. So two strips on each side of the racket, that's four total strips, that's 16 inches, and that would be four grams of weight on the nine and three o'clock position. So as soon as you do that, you can see now that you change your racket to 339 balance point, which is only 1.3 points headlight. So you're now making your racket even more towards the head heavy realm by just adding some lead tape. And this is a very common scenario that a lot of people do that want to add some extra weight to the head of the racket. They neglect how much they're changing the balance point. And I just have a thing against, I think the manufacturers do it wrong. I think the rackets coming out of the factory are designed not to be headlight enough. So we started off with a racket that was four points headlight. I think four is like minimum. I think most people will find that four to six or even eight points headlight allows a racket to be a little bit more maneuverable and just overall comfortable feeling. But that's personal preference on, and that's my subjective feeling on it. But you can see just by adding four grams to the nine and three o'clock position, you've made a pretty significant change to the balance point of a racket. So now you might want to say, okay, well now we can just fix that, right? We can just add weight to the handle. And if you have a trap door, instead of adding lead tape underneath your grip, I would much suggest that you add weight into your handle. So let's say you want to add 10 grams of tack or putty into, or even silicon into your handle and you added 10 grams. So now you've brought your racket up to 346 grams, getting sort of to the heavy side for most recreational players. Your swing weight's 335 and your balance point is now 324 and six points headlight, which in terms of balance point, I think is a much more proper headlightness to be at. But I think the swing weight is gonna be quite heavy for a lot of people. And so you've increased the swing weight but you have more proper headlights. So this is sort of a very common thing. And this is where this estimation tool could help you figure out your numbers and get you comfortable in figuring out how the customizations that you make impact your actual playing numbers, your playing specifications. So let's say I wanted to add a little bit of lead tape into the 12 o'clock position. Let's say it's just two grams. You can see now that you've dramatically impacted your swing weight because you've added two grams all the way in the head of your racket and now the swing weight is 341.5 kilograms square centimeters. And if you look at my little chart here at the bottom, you'll see that I have sort of this general guide in terms of swing weight categories. If you're between 290 and 310, that's considered pretty light in swing weight. Not too many people probably go that low. A very common area is between 311 and 325, I'll call it medium swing weights. Also very common swing weights are between 326 and 340 in terms of the recreational world and even in the pro world, like Carlos Alcaraz is known to be at 325 swing weight. So you can have the number one or number two player in the world playing with a swing weight that's, you know, sort of right around that medium level, medium to high bay level. And then of course you have extra heavy, which I think very few of any recreational players should be playing at 341 or higher in terms of swing weights. Again, this is just my guide that might provide a little bit of context and not to get caught up in the heavier rackets is better myth because that's not true, right? The best racket for you is the racket that you can swing the most comfortably in match play over long periods of time and not hit the ball late. So some people will say, I get tennis elbow from my racket not being heavy enough. Well, you also have to remember that the mass of a racket can help impart the speed and the weight of the ball. But if you're hitting the ball late, a heavier racket is going to bother your arm more than a lighter racket will because a lighter racket, you're more likely to hit the ball less late. And then of course you wouldn't get tennis elbow potentially. So remember that every, every change that you make has an equal and opposite reaction. So the idea is to find the racket and know your numbers um, best that you can in terms of swing weight and balance point. And that's what my message was in that video is understand your swing weight. Because once you find rackets that have your proper swing weight, then when you do a racket journey in the future, you can rule out any racket that has a swing weight that's higher than your preferred swing weight. Because that's really important. Get a racket with a proper swing weight. Some people think they should go on feel or gut or intuition. 
I don't believe that at all. Intuition is just telling you something that's actually what you really feel and that's actually some math behind it. Your intuition is behind the intuition is actual math. So it's just easier instead of relying on a feel or an intuition is to just know your numbers. Because if you know your numbers, you'll be able to choose a racket that's best for you. So I hope this video was a little bit helpful. And if you find this estimation tool useful, that's awesome. Please let me know in the comments. And if you find some problems or you think there's some mistakes made, since this is just a beta swing weight and balance estimation tool, again, let me know in the comments. Let me know what you think about this, if it's useful or not. Um, I was just sort of interested in seeing if I could build this tool with formulas that could help me estimate what a racket might be before I go through all the time and hassle of actually customizing a racket. I would like to get some idea of what's going to happen to a racket as I make the customizations before I make it. Okay, that's it for this video. Again, if you found it useful, let me know. Please remember to like, subscribe, and if you have any thoughts, add them in the comments, and I'll see you in the next days.